Hi, this is Bill Punch at Michigan State University. This is another vi video in a series of videos on the topic, the, an introduction to computer science using Python CSE 231. We've already had one video on the basic idea of a function. This video is going to show us a, a full uh, example and some of the mechanics about how functions actually work. Let's go ahead and get started. So here's our first example. Uh, it has two functions, one called Celsius to Fahrenheit and one called display. One thing that we need to remember about uh, the defining of a function, which is done by the def keyword, is that we have to define a function before we use it. When we define a function, we put up uh, the name of the function into our namespace and then we can invoke it. Until that, can invoke a function. So the defs typically come before the invocations. So two functions and then underneath that is a, is a little program that runs everything. If you look what the program's intent is, and let's just sort of hide the functions for a second, it's very clear. We're going to have a couple of print statements here that tell us uh, where we are in the program. So here we are starting our run. We're going to record a temperature 100. We're going to call the function Celsius to Fahrenheit which returns a converted function and then we're going to display it. Everything we need to know at a high level is contained here in this main program. It's very easy to understand what it is we're trying to do. All we need to do now is maybe look in some of the details of how we do the conversion and how we display it. Let's look up really quick then. The conversion is what we saw before. We pass in the Celsius temperature from the invocation so a temp now it gets associated with Celsius temp. We do a calculation. Here we're going to calculate uh, the Celsius temperature times 1.8 plus 32. I'm going to put another print statement in here just to say, hey, that's where we are. And then the function ends when we return the far temperature that we just did. The display function, and it's very convenient actually to put display function sort of a, in a place in the function because there's a lot of details in display functions and it's, uh, it's nice to sort of isolate them. Uh, we pass in two values, the Celsius temperature and the Fahrenheit temperature. So the first A temp goes to the Celsius temperature and the second converted temp goes to the Fahrenheit temperature. And all we do is, again, we have a function uh, print just to say, hey, that's where we are. And then we use our string formatting capabilities to try to line things up very nicely and print something at the end. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. So we started our run, that was that first print statement, then we uh, went to the uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, we get the at conversion printing, then we're done, we get the return value, go to the display function, run the display function, get nice alignment here when we print out the values. I just want to go through some of the details then about how we pass arguments to parameters because that's pretty important. Remember, as we did before, for the most part, arguments and parameters are passed in sequence. The argument from the call is passed to the first parameter in the definition, the second argument in the call is passed to the second parameter in the definition, and so on. And uh, at least as far as we know now, uh, though we'll change that in a minute, the number of args and parameters must match or you get an error. There are some ways to get around that. We'll look at it later. One thing that we need to know that I think makes things a lot clearer when you do this is that every function when it runs defines its own namespace. And again, a namespace is an association between a name and some object, some value. And so every function, when it runs, maintains its own namespace. What happens when we pass an argument from the call to the parameter in the definition is the following. Right. So here on the left-hand side is our invocation. We set a value. We call the function. We stop temporarily. We go to the function, run the function finish and then come back and pick up where we left off and what happens is that the first parameter right, part of the namespace of the main program right, associates the parameter of the function definition with the same value so here's the functions namespace called anint associated with 25 myint originally associated with 25 both now associated with the same value the same object what if we were to go through and update one of our parameters locally? So here was our situation. Right? We originally associated 
my int and an int with a value 25. Locally in the function, we said an int is going to be updated to 37 because we're now working in the functions namespace, not the globals namespace. We changed the association of an int with a new value with 37, my int, still associated with 25, unaffected. Here's another example. What happens if we define a variable inside of the function? What could happen? Here's our example. So my int is set to 25. So my int's in the namespace associated with the value 25. We call the function my int. My int passes its value to an int. An int is now also associated with the value 25. Inside of the function, we say my int is equal to 37. So while the function is running, when this suite executes, we create a new variable in the function namespace and associate it with the value 37. So you can ask yourself a question. What value prints when the print statement in the main program my int runs and what value is printed in the function when the print statement runs? And the answer is it depends on what namespace is active. When the main namespace is active, it's going to print 25. When the function namespace is active, it's going to print 37. The active namespace often determines which value is going to run.